And he said, oh, why don't you build an assistant for, for legal and started showing me his workflows, his legal tech. I showed him the language models. He started kind of asking some of the questions that, you know, he was working on, things like that. And kind of right off the bat, it seemed like this perfect application. Yeah. I mean, I think the big intuition we had and around ChatGPT was that really the models are the product. And so like a lot of the startup advice we got when we were starting Harvey was kind of pick a very narrow application, you know, go draft NDAs, make that work really well. And I think the thing we felt really strongly, so we got early access to GPT-4 about six months before ChatGPT was released. Um, but the product we built was kind of what you see now of like talk to the model and interact with it to solve this work. And it was just so general and so powerful where we would show it to, you know, in-house lawyers, partners, associates, and every different type of task they tried to do, the models could kind of do some percentage of that task. And so it didn't make sense to kind of fit these models to the kind of some narrow use case. It was much more of like, how do you build this very broad horizontal tool?